So we have just had the Finnish regulations come out for uh, the C-Class drones and also for Remote ID with absolutely no fuss, no fluff, no rhetoric, no stories, no fear, just this is the regulations that come in on the 1st of January 2024 and that's it. And that's how it should be. So why are all these other countries living in fear? Well, because people are telling you a lot of crap, okay? And we're gonna talk about that a bit later on. But first of all, we're gonna talk about the C-Class drones. Then we'll get into the bullshit later on because basically you shouldn't be living in fear. I don't, I don't think people are looking for me or I don't think people want to kill me or something, you know? No, no, I'm not paranoid, it's okay. I'm of sound mind. Right, let's talk about it. So, all the different classes of drones that are coming out now, so we have C-Class 0, then we have C-Class 1, C-Class 2, C-Class 3, and C-Class 6. So we have different types of classes, of course. I think that we'll only be talking about up to maybe two or three, so we, do, we don't really have to get into the other ones because they are, you know, we'll talk about fixed wings and heavier drones and stuff like that, and of course we're not really flying them because there is no business for them really at the moment, is there? So we'll talk about the C-Class drones from the lower numbers just now. So we're still going to start with the C-Class Zero. C-Class Zero is your Mini 3, Mini 4, and also your Mini 2 as well. So, or basically any Sub 250 that, that, that comes under uh, um, the uh, C-Class, because as long as you keep that at 19 meters per second as a speed, it will, and you can fly under the C-Class Zero, even if you don't have a sticker on it, but it will be class as C-Class Zero. But you'll also fall under A1 category as well. So falling under A1, it will be a C-Class drone. It's absolutely fine because it's seen kind of like a toy, which is fine, okay? Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's so this is your C-Class Zero, Mini 4, Mini 3, Mini 2, and don't put the heavier battery in. If you put the heavier battery in it, you then have to fly in A3 category because you take it above the 250. So not advised to do that. And of course, I don't think that many of you are flying with the heavier battery because it, I know it gives you more life, but it's certainly not part of the EU regulations. So that is C0. C1 class drone. Now here you will have your um, Mavic 3, this is just a typical Mavic 3. Also your Mavic 3 Classic is also under C1. So these are C1 drones. Also your Mavic Air 3 is also classed as a C drone. Uh, so those, you you know, you basically work in the same level as a Sub 250. So you have the same regulatories under, under the C0. So it's kind of like flying a Sub 250 with, with this. Um, uh, and that's why I love the C1 drones because they are just so easy to fly and 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 uh, you know you don't get much much you know let's say much issue out of them. So that's your C2 or sorry your C1 drone, and now we're going to talk about the C2 drones. C2 drones are, for example, your Mavic 3 Pro and also your Mavic 3 Enterprise. So. Um, they will fall under the C2 class of drones and of course with them, which is just a little bit different under C2, of course they're less than four kilograms, which is, uh, which is important, but these flights are permitted in densely populated areas, but you have to keep a 30 meter uh, actual distance or five meter with a low active speed. So if you fly this with the, with the uh, low speed, you can then uh, actually take off five meters from f from a crowd, which is actually quite good as well. So that is going to be the Mavic 3 Pro and also the Mavic 3 Enterprise series as well. So that gives you a little bit more flexibility. Uh, with the um, C2 drone, you will be flying under the A2 category. So, you know, so yeah, it's a little bit more restrictive when it comes to the A1 category, but it will allow you to fly in the A2 category, which for a drone this size and this weight, and this powerful, I think is actually quite a good thing as well. So, C2. The C3 um, category will fall under drones, for example, like the Matrice 350 RTK. 
a slightly heavier drone, but that's one that will fall under the C3, so it's not that popular. Uh, we, we don't have one, so uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a drone that we fly at the moment. I think we, may, we might have one in the Middle East, I'm not sure. But uh, certainly for here in Europe, we don't have one, so it's not a drone that we would need to use. But if you are flying the the Matrice 350, then you would actually fly that in the C3 category. And also this would fall under A3 as well. So within the A3 category, um, of course, the drone has to be less than 200, uh, sorry, 25 kilograms. Flights are permitted in a sparsely populated area. Uh, and away from people and settlements, and you have to be 150 meters from any residential, commercial, or industrial recreational areas. So quite far. So this is a drone that gives you a lot more restrictions. So that's why it's not that popular and why we don't fly it. But uh, if you do need to do it, of course, you, then you're doing this out in the country, and you cannot fly this in the city unless you are flying in specific category. And uh, I don't know many people that are doing that at the moment, but uh, that's certainly something that you could do, for example, so you could get yourself a Sora and fly, fly in the specific category, but you're flying now in the open category. So what about your Phantom 4s and your Mavic 2 Pros and your Air 2S? What about those drones? Well, you can actually still fly these drones uh, without using remote ID. Um, you can just fly them in the A3 category, which is what I just talked about with the Matrice 350. So you, you have to be very careful and, and fly away from people, 150 meters away, for example, so it's not the best. But you, but you can fly these, um, you know, and you don't have to have remote ID active. Okay, so... So, so these drones, there's you know, there's not the end of life. You can still fly them. You can still fly them legally. It's fine. So, you know, not the end of the world with them. Um, if you do want to put a remote ID tag on it, I think you can do that and fly in specific category, um, or or you can fly uh, at 19 meters per second. Actually, I think it's 19 meters per second that you fly with the speed of these drones and it keeps it in the A3 category as well. So it should be a lot better for you. So yeah, but I haven't flown these in a long time. I should maybe get them out and fly them because they are, they are actually good drones. So that is your legacy drones. And that also falls under the Air 2S as well, which I do have here. So I have the Air 2S. So, you know, even though this is a very small drone, uh, let's say compared to the other ones, and it's, it is light, but it still falls under the A3 and you have to fly under those conditions as well. So what about remote ID? Well, if we look at the conditions here for flying um, with, with these new drones under the new regulations, we can see here that um, uh, flying under the C-Class Zero, you do not have to broadcast remote ID. So sub-250 drones do not have to broadcast remote ID. So this is really important, actually. Now, I know in the US, for example, um, you don't have to broadcast remote ID if you're having a sub-250, but if you are flying with a Part 107, then you have to, if, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, but you have to broadcast remote ID if, as, if that's the case. This is not the case in Europe. You do not have to broadcast remote ID at all. So with the C1 drone, yes, you do have to have remote ID. It is compulsory. And also the same for C2 and also C3 as well. Now, this is what we have. Now, we don't have any other information apart from a remote ID must be active and that's it. But yeah, that, that's fine. So, uh, you know, there's no other narrative about what you should or you should not, and this is a safety issue and it's a security issue. There's nothing like that because that's not the case. This is just a regulatory thing. And I think that we need to stop this thing about saying that your lives are going to be, you know, unsafe. That's not the case. Now, how is it for, for remote ID? Who can actually see you? Well, in actual fact, if you are flying and you are broadcasting remote ID, who can see you? Well, if anyone has an iPhone, they will not be able to see you because the iPhone doesn't pick up the remote ID signal because of the radio, um, 
that, that is on this system with an iOS, they don't pick up the remote ID signals. So therefore, all the apps that you have available, you will not be able to see. So therefore, it's only for Android phones. So anyone with an Android phone, yes, they will be able to see you, but who wants to see you? Are you that important? Do you really think that you are so important that someone wants to see you fly? Sorry, no. <laughs> no, you're not that important. And anyone who thinks that they are so important that they have to fly and someone's going to be watching them, then I'm sorry, I think you become quite narcissistic and you might have problems with someone who's thinking that they want to come and get you. That's not the case. No one's out to get you, okay? You're not that important. And for many other people, drones are very boring. They are, okay? So what you do, I think within our bubble, it's great, it's fine. But for everyone else, they don't care, okay? Now, there are issues with people who are being attacked and whatnot. That's going to happen anyway because there are idiots out there. But to think that someone's going to be stalking you because of, of remote ID, sorry, that's, uh, that's crazy talk, I'm afraid. Okay, but uh, whether you agree with me or not on that, I, 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 you know, I don't think we're really going to come to any kind of an agreement, you know, about who's right and who's wrong. I know myself that I am safe when I fly, okay, and I've flown all over the world and I've never had any issues. I've never had anyone attack me. I've never had anyone come up and confront me. I've had people come and ask me what I'm doing and, and have an interest in it, and that's fine, and I'll do that, and we must help with social acceptance. It's very, very important. However, let's not feed this narcissistic way that we are so important that people are going to come and look for us. No, that's not going to happen, okay? Fly safe.